worked in the past, which would be a simple RNC, and you get a first order response out of these circuits. And you think to yourself, well, if one is good, two is probably better. So let's see what we actually get when we put two together. You have an R1 and a C1 and an R2 and a C2. And you say, well, okay, let's start to go through this go through this particular circuit. And you think, well, that shouldn't be too bad. You write KCL at V1, gives you this set of equations here. You can simplify it down to something that's a little more manageable, but certainly you get a certain a heavy amount of what is V1 in terms of V in and R out and V out. So you kind of get a balanced equation there. And then on the V out node, you basically have mostly just the R2 and C, and so you get sort of a first order response. So between these two equations, this one and this one, you can then combine them such that I actually get into this particular equation. Now notice what I'm trying to do here is keep the fractions down as low as possible. So I'm actually realizing I have V1 here and I can actually substitute that in directly in here and here. And that is how I'm solving this. So I'm keeping the number of fractions down as low as possible. So I'm able to take this structure, then I actually can reduce this and also uh, multiply by R1 and I get something completely devoid of fractions, which is a good thing. Um, again, if you get too many fractions, what happens is they very quickly can get you me messed up and you can make mistakes. And the last thing you want to do is start being having issues as you're starting to put this together. So, all right. So what you're able to do is you're able to get this response V out over V in. It's a second order response, S squared. Not a surprise because I have two state variables, one in V out and in V1. And then I look at the structure and I realize, okay, I get a second order time constant. It wouldn't surprise me. An R1, R2, C1, and C2. Not surprising then my tau is the square root of that. Good. I have one over here. And then I have the combination of three interesting terms. R1, C1, R2, C2. I'm not surprised at either of those, but I also get a combination of this one as well. And one of the things you can find is that sort of that first order term almost always is sort of an RC time constant of all of the different combinations. And that's one way to start to think about some of these approximations. But it does make this term a little bit more complicated. You can always show that the Q in this case will always be less than or equal to a half. So in other words, you'll always have real roots. Real or maybe an identical root if everything was balanced right. So you go, well, that's great. Can we be a little more specific? And I think, okay, sure. Let's take a case when R1 equals to R2, and we just call it R, and C1 equals C2, and that equals to C. So we kind of have made it a little bit simpler. It turns out you get a particular transfer function, which is now a little bit more straightforward. Tau now is just RC. Q is a third. So again, I expect to get two real roots. In fact, I can split this up and actually get those roots. And these are, in fact, the roots I would get uh, for a few, to a few digits. And you think, OK, that gives me an idea of, the, of what I would see. It might actually make sense to sit down and go and work our way through the step response. In that case, the step response, I get a U of T, so 1 over S. So V in is like 1 volt over S, so it's a step up. Again, it's a linear function. I could have gone step up, step down. All of it would be the same. So now I would have my V out is going to have a 1 over S term plus the other two terms in it. Okay, that's cool. Um, and I know that they, this will break into three partial fractions. I know that the first one's going to be 1 volt just because of the way the circuit is operated. I need to solve for B and C, which then just means I need to choose the right S tau term for both cases. These would be the terms you would put together in both of those cases. It gives you an output voltage, which is then... 1 volt minus that of 1.171 tau and 0.171 tau. And from this, I can directly invert it back to the step response, which does, in fact, give me a steady state of 1 volt when t goes to infinity. It does, in fact, give me a starting step right at, you know, it does give me a starting step right at 0. And then I get these two transient terms that kind of get me to an equilibrium. And so this is kind of how your step response would look. And overall you think this is great, but it does turn out that, you know, this coupling of these two terms now makes this even a little more complex than when we started. 
And there's a bit of complexity to kind of solving these things. So one may ask, like, why would I do with like op amp circuits? Well, one of the reasons is I really would like to not have these things have these sort of coupling unless I'm intentionally trying to talk about elements where I have these coupling aspects in between them all.